It smells like greenwashing to me. You've probably seen the increase of the term greenwash being used on social media and this is because there are brands that you would say are co-opting language for their products to describe the term eco-friendly. Before we get into this video about greenwashing, please make sure to subscribe, like, and comment on these videos as it helps me continue to grow in this space. So what is greenwashing? Greenwashing was first coined back in 1986 by J. Westerveld S.A. about the hotel industry practicing and placing notices in bedrooms promoting reused towels to save the environment. During this time, he noted that there was little to no effort from industries to actually reduce energy waste and that objectives for corporations were designed to only increase profit rather than, rather than to actually save the planet. According to online sources, greenwashing is a compound word modeled on whitewash, which is a marketing spin in which green PR and green marketing are deceptively used to persuade the public that an organization's products, policies, and aims are environmentally friendly. Many critics of the practice suggested that the rise of greenwashing is directly correlated to ineffective regulation. Greenwashing contributes to consumer skepticism of all green claims and diminishes the power of the consumer to drive companies towards greener manufacturing processes and business operations. In a more simple sense, it is to improve brand imagery as they know that slapping the cooler green, making an aesthetic ad that celebrates nature, is more appealing than showing the actual process and how products are sourced, made, and distributed. The issue with corporations adopting sustainable practices is that they sometimes use models as values to follow in their companies. One framework that is sustainable development goals, companies adopt and align their corporate policies with sustainability based on these goals. While these goals are limiting and addressing certain root causes of injustices, it still doesn't radically change how the company operates. What has been in companies is to be able to come with employees and strictly define what sustainability means, what greenwashing means to them, and what accountability looks like for a corporation. Over the last few years, eco-friendly products have become quite popular and they have been existed in the market since the 80s. While these types of practices are now being new for a lot of consumers in paper packaging or recyclable packaging or other types of materials, it still doesn't do enough. So can the law hold these corporations and brands accountable? Yes and no to a certain extent, and most of these violations receive a warning or a small fine. This problem is compounded by lax enforcement by regulatory agencies such as the FTC in the United States, the Competition Bureau in Canada, and the Committee of Advertising Practice and the Broadcast Committee of Advertising Practice in the United Kingdom. New regulations and laws mean to discourage companies from using greenwashing to deceive consumers. And within the United States, the United States Federal Trade Commission, which is FTC, offers several illustrations of greenwashing on its website, which details its voluntary guidelines for deceptive green marketing claims. And I wanted to show you a list of these examples of unsubstantiated claims that would be considered greenwashing under the law. The first one is plastic package containing a new shower curtain that is labeled recyclable. It is not clear whether the package or the shower curtain is recyclable. In either case, the label is deceptive. If any part of the package or its contents other than a minor components cannot be recycled. Another example is an area rug labeled 50% more recycled content than before. The manufacturer increased the recycled content from two to 3%. Although that's technically true, the message conveys a false impression that the rug contains a significant amount of recycled fiber. And the next example is a trash bag that is labeled recyclable, right? Not what you would say is that most trash bags are not actually being separated and they're actually being sent to the incinerator. So the claim is deceptive since it asserts that an environmental benefit where no meaningful benefit systems exist. And the list goes on here in the United States. We are doing a poor job to regulate these brands who continue to make this messaging. As I've said it to my community, follow the money when you want to look for greenwashing. It is easy many of us to state the following. Is it recyclable? Is it compostable? Is it biodegradable? Where are the ingredients being sourced from? Does it have certain chemicals that are harmful to my health and body? 
While these tropes do represent a general consumer questions, I tend to provide these strong case studies that I've seen on major greenwashing and explain to you why in theory it seems right, but when you follow the money it leads to more disappointment. The first one is 7th Generation, our favorite laundry brand that we used to love. I actually made this video on TikTok that actually has blown up over a comedic relief video in which I was assuming that the laundry detergent I was buying in college was only in paper packaging without real realizing that it had plastic lining inside it. Which makes sense in theory because paper would get wet. But anyways, back in 2021, Seventh Generation made a series of tweets and Instagram posts where they said the following. We support defunding the police like we support keeping fossil fuels in the ground. It's imperative we divest from systems of harm and invest in regenerative systems for all. Seventh generation commits to supporting the efforts of the hashtag defund the police. Now, this statement angered so many people for certain reasons, one being the far-right groups who are pro-police and other environmentalists that were a bit skeptical of their stance of these statements. Now, we all know during 2020 and 2021, during the rise of BLM movements, a lot of corporations were making commitments to become racially and culturally diverse in support of the black community. When you do research on 7th generation, this small owned company is not one anymore. In fact, in 2016, Unilever agreed to acquire 7th generation, a Vermont based maker of green household products like laundry detergent and diapers. And these financial terms were not disclosed, but a hidden source says that they paid between 600 million and 700 million in cash for this acquisition. Now I used Seven Generation back in 2014, and I didn't know it was sold off until 2019 when someone told me it's actually owned by a large brand now. The controversy is that Unilever, which is a large British multinational consumer goods company with headquarters in London, has been found to be one of the largest plastic polluters that is degrading and contributing to the environmental injustice. It is counter to say that they are against the police system when they are also linked to palm oil deforestation and worker exploitation. As we covered in a previous video about the prison industrial complex, a brand that takes stances to support defunding the police but yet continues to uphold oppressive structures is just the same as those who are wanting the system to continue. Now this to me is a major act of greenwashing. Now this is just one case of greenwashing that I feel that we must think more critically when choosing to buy these products. Obviously, I know that if an individual buys these products, it doesn't make them a horrible person, but we can use education as a tool of empowerment to help consumers choose products that are more sustainably made. And you can see cases of greenwashing everywhere if you Google brands greenwashing, from brands having a paper bottle and plastic bottle inside, or having the word green, it's ingrained in our heads. Now, how do PR companies contribute to greenwashing? Well, let me tell you, a recent article from The Guardian found that major oil companies are not fully backing up their energy talk with action. Now, the PR and advertising firms that have been creating the industry's greenwashing strategies for decades face a reckoning over whether they will continue to serve big oil. One such PR company that has come under fire is Edelman, one of the largest PR firms that has relationships serving big oil. And Edelman, which made headlines late last year for making big climate pledges while also working for oil companies like Exxon and Shell and trade groups such as the American Fuel and Petrochemical Manufacturers, which have a reputation for blocking climate policy. At a company meeting in December, the firm's chief executive, Richard Edelman, told employees that the company would not walk away from fossil fuel clients, but that it would reject projects that delay progress towards a future with net zero greenhouse gas emissions. In the face of this week's report, it would be hard to say that any oil major meets that standard, which doesn't make any sense, but another example of greenwashing from the PR industry. And this year, Clean Creatives came together with 100 creators, experts, and advocates to demand Edelman to drop all fossil fuel clients. This garnered attention for many people in PR and marketing field, yet there were no active promises or commitments made from Edelman to eliminate their contracts with big oil companies like Exxon and Shell. 
Time after time, greenwashing continues to manifest itself in different forms from both an individual level but a large systemic level. It's not just consumers that should be calling out each other for upholding greenwashing, but to think about calling out greenwashing as a climate justice issue. When we are able to have active conversations with corporations, we are, change we are creating an opportunity to change. And greenwashing will continue to rise as the creator economy continues to grow, and it is our responsibility, even myself, with the platform, to uphold the standards of ethics. And this isn't about a purity movement, but a movement on about accountability and justice. Now, what do you think of greenwashing? Do you feel that it's talked about a lot in your circles? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to help continue supporting Queer Brown Vegan's YouTube channel. Love you all.